Recordology. Hey everybody, welcome back to Recordology. Okay, I've got some filthy tapes here on this reel-to-reel that I inherited. As you can see, they are coated in this sort of yellowish film. I'm sure it's mostly smoke residue as this thing reeks like smoke. So we need to clean it. So I'm taking a clean acrylic reel on the right-hand side, and I am simply going to play the tape or try to here. Now, what you're witnessing is me forgetting that I had threaded the tape while it was in the play position. Therefore, the little tape pin sensor is thinking that there's no tape there, and therefore it's not allowing me to play it. But while I'm figuring that out, here's the plan. So I'm going to take the tape coming off the dirty uh, reels and spool it onto clean reels and clean the tape at the same time. How are we going to do that? There's different, you know, methodologies for doing that. I'm simply going to take a lint-free cloth and some lint and uh, some very soft paper. Uh, and when I say paper, I mean like uh, tissue, like uh, Kleenex. And we're just going to gently pinch the tape as it goes through from the dirty take up reel or the you know feeding reel, feeder reel to the take up reel, and hope for the best. Some people say that there are different, you know, you can put like car polish and stuff on and different things. And I, you know, I'm thinking getting the tape wet is probably a bad idea. I'm not sure if I fully understand that that method to do it. So I'm just going to try sort of a first attempt here by simply threading the tape in and gently, gently pinching it with a lint-free towel. Actually, the first one I'm going to use here is one of the drying cloths from the Spin Clean because it's super, super soft. And I've got a little bit of room there. I've got about an inch and a half, two inches to work with. So let's see. I don't know if this is going to work. I'm making this up as I go along. Even, you know, holding it, trying to figure out the way to hold it is tricky. So getting it going there, finally got it fed through the, the actual transport correctly. And it seems to be doing good. It's coming off the old reel. I, I'm applying just enough pressure that it's not stopping it. It's not stressing the tape out. But that cloth is making continual contact with the take-up reel. So let's go ahead and stop it and see what we got here. It definitely looks like it's doing something. I'm going to try a different angle here or a different piece of cloth because I'm thinking as it becomes dirty, you know what I mean? I want more, I want to keep clean fabric in contact with it and not just, you know, build up a giant, you know, dirty spot. So every now and then what I do is I stop it, reposition the cloth. Now, obviously watching this is kind of like watching paint dry. So stay tuned to the end. I got some interesting, interesting recordings I found on this tape, which we'll listen to and I will demonstrate as well. Very interesting when you inherit tape, what's on there. When somebody, you know, could record anything from voices to, you know, music and, you know, radio, television, you name it. It's in, it's, a, you'll never know what you're going to find. In fact, keep it clean, but tell me in the comments down below, what are some of the interesting things you found on tapes? Maybe they could be cassette tapes. They could be reel to reel like this. They could be anything. What have you found? There's a little shot of the uh, filth that's building up. No big surprise there. A lot of mold, that whitish stuff on the left reel there. There's mold there, which, you know, I'm an asthmatic, so I'm not excited to have mold in the house. And uh, with these things flying around so fast, you know, I don't like the idea of mold particles getting in the air. So we want to get this cleaned and get that grime out of the house as soon as possible. But yeah, let me know in the comments down below some of the more interesting things you've discovered. I'd be really curious. So now you can see with the tape offloaded, it's a filthy reel. It needs to be washed and that's a separate project. So this reel, I'm, using, I'm cleaning or I'm loading dirty tape from a dirty full size seven inch reel onto a clean seven inch reel. And obviously there's a lot less room. Look at that, those crimped tape areas, it's awful. There's a lot less room and I can't hold that cloth there. So I improvise these two little Q-tips with some either toilet paper or I think it's actually tissues that I've wound around there. And did the same thing, just you know, send it through the machine on fast forward, gently applying enough pressure. And it seems to be doing a good job. I repositioned it a few times. Again, I'm sparing you like a couple hours project by not showing you everything. But as that dirty tape is offloaded and respun after being, you know, wiped clean, it looks great. The tape itself looks really, really good. And as you can see, there's some dirty sides there that I already cleaned and rotated. So it's definitely getting some grime. It matches the color of all the other grime. So I think it's just that smoke. But the tape 
Thankfully, it looks really, really good. So check it out. Here's what we got off of there. It's just filthy, just nasty. But it seems like this did a really good job. And now I can take that reel on the left there and scrub it with some soap, which I did off camera. And this is the final result. The tape looks good. The reels look good. And I think that it's all usable. You can see the different colors of oxide tape there. And I think we're good to go. Okay, so I've got everything cleaned up. Uh, the tape's as clean as it can get. It's actually a lot less damaged than I thought it would be. But I thought we would just listen to it a little bit, see what's on it. Um, there's a lot of different speeds. You know, you got all three speeds this thing can play, and there's different things played and recorded at different speeds. But one of the things I found on there was a football game, which by some of the names they're mentioning, I'm guessing is from the early 80s, maybe even as early as 1980. So listen to this. to Mile High Stadium, where they normally wear orange jerseys, but in preseason at times, they do change up and show the folks the road uniforms. Jim Browner and Nathan Poole are also back. Turner, the man in the middle. Fans coming to their feet. Fast forward a little bit. There's quite a bit of this game. further on in the tape there's also some kids talking just playing into the microphone one of the other tapes one of the smaller tapes had some like disco music seems like they put this thing away probably mid 80s and it's probably been sitting ever since it still smells like smoke pretty bad coming out of the back i sprayed some cologne on the it's a very like porous wood so i sprayed some of that on the back to try and soak that in there the fan though when it gets blowing it just smells like this machine was um, exposed to a lot of nicotine. Let's just say that. Also looking to see where he was going to spike it when he got to the end zone and took his eye off of it, and that's why he dropped it. That should have been an interception. Now the Broncos do some changing. Bryson Manor comes in. Gratishar and Rizzo come out, and at a defensive back, Denver puts in Maurice Harvey, who has been recuperating. They talk about Munoz having his... Uh, rookie year, and that's what placed it early 80s to me. I could be wrong, but I didn't do a whole lot of research on this, but that's my guess at this point. Basically, from that leg injury he suffered in preseason last year, and the Bengals with a third and six at their own 17. We expect to get different defensive looks from the Broncos this year. And this is one of them right here. Bass left, Curtis right, Anderson dropping back, looking toward this side, throws it upfield, and it's incomplete, knocked away by Swenson as he went up in the air in front of M.L. Harris, rookie tight end from Kansas State, and knocked the ball away, broke up the pass. And uh, Harris, Larry, to test your memory, Kansas State rookie, age 26. That tests my memory. I don't really remember him. I'll have to be honest with you. I don't think he played last year. Virgil C. is waiting at the Bronco 40-yard line. McAnally on a fourth and six stands at his two. So there you go, guys. Pretty interesting. Definitely some historic tape there. That being said, I'm probably going to dub right over it. Um, nothing that holds a lot of personal value to me, and I'm sure not the only recording of this game. And uh, but interesting. It's always interesting when you uh, acquire any, you know, media that you have no idea what's on it. You know, it's interesting to discover. I was thankful that we got the mold and you know, uh, oxidation removed. Excess oxidation. I guess all tape is purely oxidation. <laughs> but you know what I mean. Any excess that was on there. Um, it is highly recommended to clean tape uh, that looks like it needs it. And some people say to do it. Even, you know, when you, you acquire a clean-looking tape like this now looks. But interesting, anyway, pure archaeology. This machine, by the way, is fantastic, except for that smoke odor, which I'm hoping dissipates. I've actually been researching how to clean it out. And you can take the whole thing apart and use some alcohol and, and whatnot. But I think a lot of it is soaked into this porous wood. It's finished on the sides, but the back is porous, and I'm sure the inside is porous as well. So, all right, guys, that's going to do it for today. Thank you so much for watching. Happy record hunting. We will see you tomorrow.